It was during the Depression. My father was a miner. And um, all my brothers except one, my younger brother, were miners. And they all got out of the mines except the very oldest one uh, who loved the mines so much that I couldn't bribe him out. I couldn't get him. There was no way I could get him out. And he stayed in until the bitter end. Uh, so that he died. He died last year. Uh, no, he died this year, actually, about uh, five or six months ago. And you can imagine how tough the, the, the constitution of the family is, that with his lungs full of dust, uh, he lived until he was 79. And he was very uh, angry because he didn't make 80. But to have lived that long and to have worked, he went down the, the mines when he was 13 years old, and he came up when he was 65. And he died of the, the he lung died ailment? Of, from yes, the... pneumoconiosis. Yeah. Well, you weren't being sarcastic when you said he loved the mines. Yeah, you no, really, he, he really I didn't know anyone loved to... Oh, yes. Like a, a, oh, yes, my, my, my father, who was apparently a great miner, the, in the days before mechanization and so on, uh, when you've got the great seam, there's a, there's a great seam, a famous seam, a, a world-famous one, which I believe is called the Great Atlantic Fault. And it starts in uh, northern Spain, in the Basque country. And it goes under the Bay of Biscay, and it comes up in South Wales, and it goes under the Atlantic, and comes up in Pennsylvania. So that if you took a Basque miner or a Welsh miner or a Pennsylvania miner, and if you could blindfold them and transport them, and they know the, the coal face the minute they saw it. It's, it. I believe it's four feet six inches. And my father used to yeah. talk about it as some men will talk about women, talk about the beauty of this coal face. And my brothers would tell me stories about my father um, who would look at the seam. My father's a very short man, an ideal height for a man. He was about five feet three or four. Very, very powerful, of course. And he would look at the, uh, at the seam of coal, and he would, as to almost surgically make a mark on it, and then ask his boy, every miner has a boy who works for him, and he would say, give me the number two mandrel, that's a half-headed pick. <clears throat> and then, having stared at this gorgeous display of black, shining ribbon of coal, he would then hit it with one enormous blow. And if he hit it right, something like 20 tons of coal would fall out from the coal face. Really? So that it was thrilling, it was exciting. And indeed, that's why I think when you perhaps think of me as being born uh, with a silver spoon and so on, uh, miners uh, believe themselves, or believed themselves anyway, to be the, uh, the uh, aristocrats of the working class. They felt superior to all other kinds of manual laborers. They were skilled workers. That cold face was a, was a magical creature. Has that all been replaced now by mechanized Yes, you drill stuff. things now and you Lost some cut of the out the of years. So your father would probably be against that. If, uh, yeah, well, he wouldn't say that. He'd say they're not miners at all now. They're just... Uh, machines do the work. Machines do yeah. the work, yes. Yeah. Did, did you have a fear of, of the mines? Um, what I'm trying to say is, did, did you see yourself as uh, that that was something to escape, to get out into another world? No, not at all, no. Uh, the opposite, as a matter of fact. Um, everybody's ambition, every little boy's ambition in, in my valley was to become a miner because uh, there was the arrogant strut of the lords of the cold face. They had these... Uh, muscular buttocks and the bow, bow legs and they walked with a kind of arrogance and everybody wanted to be like a miner wanted to stand on street corners and look at uh, the posh people pass with, uh, with hostile eyes and uh, insult <laughs> the girls from the, the doctor's daughter, the lawyer's daughter the preacher's daughter as they passed and insult them with these cold looks because they were the kings of the underworld. They, they look down on people from below, in a sense, didn't in, they? Absolutely. You are clever. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> you invert things so beautifully. You'll, you'll notice that more and more as we go along. <laughs> How many days is this show going to last? <laughs>